Off, we're going to have a, a great talk here by Scott Cleland with HGST, and we just talked about data um, moving all over the place and through different systems and interconnections and all that. And I think Scott, um, one thing he worries about is that maybe you forget about your data and not do enough stuff with it. So he's going to come up here, and he's going to talk about how to keep your data active. Scott. Thank you very much. All right. Well, let me see here. There it is. Hi, I'm Scott Cleland, HGST. I run uh, product marketing for HGST Cloud Infrastructure Business Unit. It's tough to see the audience, but how many journeyed into the cloud today? I bet you everybody journeyed into the cloud today, all right? How many, and I won't be able to see your hand, so I'll guess, know about object storage and the pervasiveness of object storage in the cloud, right? We've got Facebook with trillions of objects and AWS Amazon with trillions of objects. Object storage is not designed or built for transactional data. It's designed and built for massively scalable data. HEST has a solution that brings the economics of commercially available cloud storage into on-premises integration and deployment. It's not just me that believes that object storage is the future, the present and the future of cloud storage. Many experts agree. IDC and Gartner, Evaluator Group, all say that there is a time and a place for object storage and it is in the cloud. And people are moving to object storage more and more. It's not a new technology, it's a mature technology. Let me go back there for a second because it's affordable, it's massively scalable. The more massively scaled out you get, the lower the cost per gigabyte becomes. You can get the cost per gigabyte on an HGST object storage active archive system for less than a penny per gigabyte at full deployment and scale. The rallying cry behind object storage is scale, scale, scale. So we need to scale both in capacity and scale in performance. And the data has to be accessible. So think of object storage like um, a valet parking. Go put my car somewhere, and when I give you this ticket, go get my car. I don't care where it is. Get my car and bring it back to me in good condition. That is what the value of object storage is. There's not layers of file systems and layers of, of blocks and LBAs that you have to manage and reassemble data back into a file before you get it. It sits out in this massively scaled storage repository and you get it all back when you need it. And it scales to millions and millions of users. And it scales to billions and billions of objects. Unstructured data is the key here, right? So Facebook, of course, has a lot of unstructured data. AWS has a lot of unstructured data. It's got to be simple. So you could roll this thing in, plug it in, and be up and running in about two hours. Massively simple to manage, reduce your OpEx, reduce your CapEx, eliminate other infrastructures as it becomes necessary or available, and I'll get into those things. Who is HGST? We are storage. So we delivered the first disk drive to the industry in 1956. Yes, that's us. And now we've got a whole portfolio of storage products. I'm going to focus on the blue, which is our system, our active archive system in particular. And I'm going to bring you through a little storyline around where all this data sits today and how you could all put it back together again and have it accessible through the cloud and through uh, uh, RESTful APIs. More data, more challenges. So all of your data is in many, many different silos and sites. There's multiple copies that make it all very unmanageable. Uh, analyzing all this data, all the, and I don't just mean the daily daily data. I mean using the data and the assets that, that corporate enterprises own and using it to better their business, to transform their business, to make their business more efficient. 
and, and I'll give you a, an example of how HESC just did just that. Tape archives are great. They're cheap, and the technology has, has evolved. But the data on those tape archives are typically too cold to extract value of them when you need it. More data, more opportunities. The more knowledge that you can derive from the data that you own, the better your businesses will run. That's obvious. You can analyze all of your data, both current and historical, to make better decisions around your company and products. Uh, you can utilize your primary compute and storage more fully while having this massively scaled back end in order to capture and retain and use and make active all that data from disparate sources. This is what a typical enterprise might look like. You've got mission critical apps and you've got snapshots of that data throughout the day in order to roll back. You're probably doing some sort of mirroring uh, for disaster recovery on those snaps. And then you're probably doing a full backup, incremental backups and daily backups and then whatever other kinds of backups you need to do. And then those need to go somewhere off site for long term disaster recovery or compliance backups. That's a lot of storage you're using for just backing up and not using. Then you got business core apps. These are things that aren't so transactional, that aren't absolutely required to run your business. That you probably have, or your customers probably have, the same type of strategy that's been cultivated over the last 25, 30 years. So I'm gonna take snapshots of this data, I'm gonna do a mirror of the snaps, I'm gonna back up my system, I'm gonna make some incremental backups, I'm gonna ship that off to some offsite backup, and again, three, four, five copies of data, you're only using one copy of it. That starts adding up. It starts costing a lot of money to manage. You need more people to manage that data. In some cases, when you've got rows and rows and rows and rows and rows in your data center, you're looking for blinky lights so you can go swap out drives. The beauty of object storage is that it's durable. Theoretically, you don't even need a backup. With multi-site, multi-geo, erasure code dispersion, and that's the, that's the core of the data durability and object storage, you could actually fail full data centers and still retrieve your data, still run your business, still do your analytics. That's a very powerful weapon in transforming data centers into cloud active data centers. So you got that now, you've got private and public cloud data, right? So that's what we're here for. But you've got that, and you probably have to back that up somehow. And you're probably gonna back it up. So that's more storage, and more tape, and more manage, and more OpEx, and more CapEx. And in most cases, traditional block and file storage cannot possibly scale effectively and efficiently and cost effectively, effectively to run the business smoothly. So you're stuck with all this data. Well, what do you do with data? Well, data becomes big data. So now you got data analytics. So how are you gonna back that up? Do you back it up? You have data warehouses, you got analytics clusters, you've got people running analysis against the data, and then that data has to feed back up into the business lines, and then they make decisions based around that data. But maybe they don't have all the information. Maybe they have the information available to them at that time, but there's a lot more information that they could use in order to more effectively run their business. So you've got all these silos, all these copies, all this money being spent to activate it, to retrieve it, and there's use cases that are, just don't lend itself to this really nicely, like media entertainment. When you're producing a sports event and you need data from 1959 or 2002 around a particular event or an athlete, it sure would be nice in the production workflow to be able to get access to that data immediately and not go open a ticket and wait for it. They usually need it right now. That's how today's 
uh, media production works. So you've got analytics, you've got mission critical, you've got uh, business data. All this data has value. So how do you extract the value from all that data? Well, there's so many copies and so much management involved with that, in a lot of cases, you just won't do it. You'll do the best use that you can with the data at your disposal, make the decisions around that, and hope for the best. But what if there was a better way? Imagine, if you will, a single repository of storage, a single repository of information and knowledge to derive critical business decisions, to run critical business analytics against, and make better decisions to run your company better. Well, you need to start with something that will scale. Something that will scale and be accessible through the cloud. Because today, we don't all sit in our little cubes and offices with a laptop or a desktop, God forbid, and go try to retrieve a file and run some business analytics against it. You want accessibility through cloud applications to millions or thousands or hundreds, depending on the size of the enterprise, through iPhones and iPads and tablets and every, anything else. So you need to have this information and knowledge accessible through applications, through cloud APIs, so that your sales force can run faster, run better, your marketing can make better decisions, the business line managers can make better decisions. Ultimately, it boils all the way up to the CIO and the CEO, and they say, you know what? We've made investments in storage that allow us to reach more customers and to sell better products. Cloud scale storage. So HEST Active Archive System supports what's called geo spread. Geo spread is a way to spread the data around multiple geographies, hundreds of kilometers apart from each other. So it could be in, in the Americas, it could be in Europe. Spread across, you've got access to your data from the closest repository to where you're geographically located. That's a powerful tool. So what is the Active Archive system? Well, it's 4.7 petabytes of raw storage. It's about three petabytes of usable storage. 15 nines of data durability, 15 nines. If you want to put it in terms of system reliability, we're used to five nines of system reliability. Six nines if you're really mission critical, really high end mission critical, six nines. Eight nines is the blink of an eye. So that's how much downtime you have in a system at eight nines. Now, I'm only giving you that because it's an interesting example. Data durability is far, is far different than system reliability. But what you want is access to your data at the lowest risk possible. And 15 nines is a higher number than anything in the market today. Typically in the cloud, with scale out commercial products, you'll get 11 nines. 12 nines is good, 13 nines is pretty good. I'll go with 15 nines. That means that you've got access to your data, that that data will be there in case of disasters in a geo-spread environment. That's a pretty powerful uh, weapon when you're, when you're selling inside of a business on moving from traditional storage to object storage. And of course it needs to scale, both in capacity and performance. The more racks you add, the more linear scalability you'll get. Linear scalability. It's a very efficient protocol. You can eliminate multiple copies of your data where your, disk, your storage utilization may be around 30% and get your storage utilization up into the 70%. There's very little overhead to massively scaling out. Scale as you grow. You can start with three petabytes of usable and as you grow, as your business grows, which it will, as your data requirements grow, I'm sorry, 
Let's do that again. I'm sorry again. You could scale with a single namespace. So there's not these layers of hops in order to get access to your data. It's a single namespace. You could even up that one more time and create what we call availability zones. This is what I talked about. If your users are closer to a geog geographical data center, then the data is going to be pulled from there. Still, a single namespace, and now you're creating availability zones, which is very, very typical in massively large scale cloud storage companies like AWS and Google and Azure. So you could do the same thing with an HCST Active Archive system as they charge for in the cloud. There comes a time when your data needs grow so exponentially and your desire to run your business more efficiently becomes such a high priority. And data becomes so heavy that you don't want it out in the cloud, out in their cloud. You want it in your cloud because you own it. It's your most valuable asset, your data. The gravity of data is such that where it's created is typically where it resides for a very long time, unless you want to spend a lot of money pulling it out. What looks like good value to public clouds, actually there's a lot of taxes included in that. Puts and gets, reads and writes. You don't have that in here. You own it, and over a period of time, it'll pay for itself. It's much more economically feasible to install one of these and own your data over a long period of time than it does to put your, your data up into public clouds. And of course, there's many use cases where private clouds becomes an absolute must. Financial services, for instance, medical, life sciences, where you don't want that data up in a, in a public cloud. All enterprises want the cost benefits of cloud, but not all enterprises can deal with the security issues around doing that. So private cloud becomes the answer to get those economics, to get access to information and knowledge that they possess at the same price or lower, in most cases lower, <coughs> excuse me, than you'll get in the public. You could scale across geographies. You could scale both in the data center and across data centers. Now, when you, have, you want access to the data, it's actually dispersed across all of these racks. Erasure coding. It's another whole session that I hope will be available soon. Erasure coding eliminates all the, all the, uh, the, the downfalls of RAID. Think of a 10 terabyte drive. Then think of 10,000 10 terabyte drives in a RAID 6 or a RAID 60. <coughs> for those storage people who have been around for 30 something years like me, the rebuild on that will take forever, weeks and weeks and weeks and you're in degraded mode during that rebuild. Erasure coding eliminates that entire thing. You will always have access. You could fail multiple drives many multiples of drives, including entire data centers, and still have access with no degradation in performance or very minimal degradation in performance and run your business. So what you want to do is get all your data in one place. So you can install HDST Active Archive systems. <clears throat> you could start moving your data or have a strategy or a plan to move your data into a single repository. You can eliminate tape. <coughs> I'm not suggesting that tape is dead, but tape is cold. And I want access to that information and that knowledge. So you can eliminate many of the backups. You can still retain your tape archives in a salt mine in Utah. That's perfectly acceptable. But all that information and data resides in a single repository. I just mentioned you can reduce your backup footprint. <clears throat> so data retention is all about risk. There's 
more risk in losing backups and not being able to restore backups than there is on keeping that data active and accessible to you on an object storage system. There's less risk. <clears throat> now compliance, government compliance in particular, will force you to keep things off site. But it's a checkbox. You want access to your data all the time. So now what? I'm gonna bring five of you up here. No, I'm not. Now what? Well, you'll have faster access to archives. Backup as a service is a great, great, great use case for object storage. With multiple sites, backup as a service becomes a dominant use case for object storage. Not only backing it up, but being, being, having it be accessible. Um, the common interface in object storage is S3. AWS developed it, it's open, it's restful. S3 is the interface of choice and the HTC Active Archive supports S3. Many applications, most cloud applications will talk to storage through S3. If they don't talk to storage through S3, there's many, many, many NFS and SIFs and SMB gateways that allow you <coughs> to use applications, still get the benefit of object storage, and just do a hop through a gateway. So you can analyze all your data in one place. You can, by using S3 ingest and S3A for analytics, not only retain your data in one place, back up all your data in one place, but run your big data applications all from that same repository. There is no such thing as file locking. This data is available to millions of users at one time. Uh, data powers better collaboration. I've mentioned this. So in order for businesses to run effectively and efficiently, you need to have collaboration. You need people to have access to the data at the same time, sometimes millions of users. And now you could do that with HSC Active Archive. We have availability zones through 3GO technologies. You could use many, many, many different types of uh, gateways in order to connect the dots between compute and storage. In media entertainment, you've got DAMs and MAMs, data, um, data managers marketing managers that need access to these assets, these unstructured assets. Many of them are now moving to S3. They're traditionally NAS. Now they're moving to S3. So the world is opening up for object storage. It's actually blossoming and opening up. Just like the revolution of storage area networks to run your business, object storage, it's now the time. With cloud as pervasive as it is, Cloud touches our lives from the moment we wake up to the moment we wake up again in the middle of the night to look at our iPhone. <laughs> so it's always on. And if it's always on, why would you want to wait for your data to be retrieved from sl some slower, colder medium? How are companies doing this? Well, at HGSC, we had the problem. We manufacture millions upon millions upon millions of disk drives. That is a complicated task to innovate into the disk drive enterprise. It's very complicated. HEST is the only company in the world that has helium filled disk drives. Who would have ever thought that anyone would be able to contain helium? in a three and a half inch form factor and get the bit density rates that we're seeing now and apply it through object storage to the greater cloud. So we had millions of devices. We had test data daily in silos around Asia Pacific world. And we weren't doing anything. We had, to, we had to wait for that data to be collected and then sent somewhere for, for storage, typically on tape. 
How do you get access to that data and use it to better the business? Well, Active Archive was a solution. We have Active Archive systems installed in the SwitchNab data center in Las Vegas. If anyone's familiar with that, or if you're not familiar with that, go look it up on, uh, on the Google. You'll love it. It's quite a data center. So we've got these things installed, and now all test data is sent to this data center. And then we can run analytics against that test data, against millions and millions of drives, and fine tune the manufacturing process, understand deeper knowledge around the engineering of the drive, feed that back into the corporation, feed that back into engineering. And what do we get? Better products. I challenge anybody in the room to go look for reliability metrics on disk drives in the industry. The reliability metrics against HGST disk drives are so much lower than anybody else in the space that it's mind boggling. And why do we do that? Because ultimately we want drives out there that aren't failing. Ultimately we want the best products integrated into our object storage system so that the customers get the benefit of the reliability, accessibility, data durability, scalability of an object storage system. So we did deeper analysis on the manufacturing data, we fed that back into the business and we get better products. You get better products, your customers get better products, the world gets better products, and it's a safer place. It's a better place, it's a more efficient place. Okay, one salesy thing. Try it now. If you're a CSP, if you've got an enterprise that has massively scale scalable data growth challenges, give us a call, get on our website. You could try it out. You could run your applications against object storage and see the benefit. So there's a remote connection via an S3. It's your workloads. I don't know if that's coming across over here. It's your workloads. It's your data in our POC labs. HESC is committed to this. It's committed to this architecture and this technology. If anyone's familiar with AmpliData, AmpliData was the first fully baked, fully featured object storage software commercially available. And we've acquired that company, we've integrated it and innovated on top of it, and now we've delivered it to the market. We're trying to help the world harness the value of data with smarter storage solutions. Thank you. <laughs>